Welcome back. So in the previous set of uh, videos, we talked about what causes waves, so in terms of vibrations, and then also the difference between transverse and longitudinal waves. So I can put up a link up above there to the difference between transverse and longitudinal. So I'm going to assume that you are familiar with that and you understand what that difference is. In this video, as it's entitled, I want to talk about some of the characteristics of waves. And my assumption is that you are kind of on the introductory side towards physics or possibly some foundational math courses or maybe even small engineering courses where you're talking about characteristics of waves. So if you go back to a transverse wave, which is the first one that I'm going to talk about, it's a little bit easier to understand. So here is a set of particles and they have been vibrated in some way. So these particles are going to be moving up and down. So because of the fact that it's a transverse wave, the particles moves up and down, yet the wave propagates okay, um, in terms of a perpendicular motion to the motion of the particle. So it's moving, let's assume, to the right. So let's assume that this particular wave okay, is propagating in this direction. Now, as this wave propagates forward, we have a certain characteristics that we can outline. Now, those characteristics, I've kind of summed them up in here in terms of just words for us. So the wave itself will take on some kind of a shape or a form. So therefore, we, take, we call that basically the wave, okay, and what form it takes, okay, or what shape it takes on, or just simply the wave form of this particular propagation, okay, of the particles vibrating. So it is a wave and it takes on a certain shape or a form. So in this case, okay, it basically looks like a shape. Okay, if I draw this out, that would look something like this. Now, there is some kind of an equilibrium position that you have within waves. So in this case, what is that equilibrium position? Well, the equilibrium position is the point where the particles are vibrating around. So they're going up and down, up and down. And the midpoint okay, of that vibration, as it goes up and down, up and down, that midpoint position is the equilibrium point. So if I were to draw this, now I may get this off or wrong a little bit. I'm going to try to take this in. Okay, and I'm going to try to shift it around. So probably somewhere around here. This would be the equilibrium point and you would have, and I'm going to just pick on one of these. Maybe I'll make it red and I'll also fill it in so that it really stands out for us. So if we have this particle, so this particle is vibrating up and down, okay, with respect to this equilibrium point. So it goes up, okay, and down. Now, of course, all the other particles are following. So this is how the wave actually starts to propagate all the way through. So that particular equilibrium point that we have is the position okay of that middle point and all of these particles if you would take any of them so you know you can take okay something along in here so it would continue to propagate all the way through and then all the way back down up okay and then so on except it's going okay and this is in tangent so basically all of the particles are moving in that direction so we have an equilibrium position all right so i'm going to leave that equilibrium position there so it's easier to understand the others. Now, the amplitude. So what is the amplitude okay, of a wave? Well, the amplitude is actually the distance from the equilibrium point to its highest point okay, that it reaches. So that particle is going to reach some particular height. Now, if the wave all the way through propagates and, and if it is uniform as we have it here, so we have an amplitude. Now, amplitude is assumed to be positive. Of course, you have an amplitude which is above the equilibrium and you have an amplitude which is below the equilibrium. Now, these two are identical and very often we'll designate it with a capital A, but we don't make it negative. So the amplitude is not negative. It is actually the distance from the equilibrium to the highest point. And it doesn't matter if it's the top okay, or the bottom. So that amplitude is from here to there. Now, twice the amplitude, so the distance all the way from the bottom to all the way on top. So this would have been twice the amplitude. And that is the total height between that it swings in. So that would be the distance 
that your actual position is kind of swinging back and forth in between. So that is the amplitude. Now, the crest of the wave, the crest is the peak point. So this is what it is above. So that particular peak point that you have in here, so those would be the crests. The trough, okay, is at the bottom. So this is your trough. So this is all the way at the bottom of the wave. So crest is top, trough is at the bottom. Now, a very interesting designation is something called a wavelength, which is going to be extremely important as you study waves. What is a wavelength? We designate it with this lambda, so it's a Greek letter that we have. So that particular lambda okay, that we write out, it is the length or it is the distance between two points on the wave that are at identical positions with respect to the equilibrium and the distance is from one point to another. So what that means is that if you're moving along, so if this wave keeps propagating forward, so as this wave keeps moving along, so it's propagating all the way through. Now, what I haven't mentioned yet, okay, in this particular case, this axis, these, this equilibrium point, if we're propagating through and if this is moving forward, this is like your X, okay? So this is like your position X. So where are you in the wave is a position. And if you take okay, the peak point in here, so if you take this point, so let's say that it was, this particular peak point was here. And you know, let's say that this particular point is an exactly, I'm gonna change it back into red as well and keep it that way so that it's very easy for us to identify. So what we're saying is that the wavelength is from this point to the exact position, okay, all the way through, and it is the distance from that point to another. So it is the actual full distance, or it is simply known as the length, and it is called the wave length because of the fact that, as you notice, that basically you have a full cycle. So it's a repetitive process, and then it begins again, and it would continue through. So that wavelength is known as the total distance between those two identical points. They don't have to be at the actual crest, meaning at the top. They don't have to be at the trough. It's just the easiest to probably point out. You could very easily just say, all right, so I'm going to point out this one. So let's me kind of change this back in into a different color. Okay, and then the other one, which is all the way over here. So these would be two in identical positions. And that wavelength, so from that distance to the next, so from here all the way to here, so this would have been known as the wavelength. And that wavelength would have been identical to the actual positions of these two that you would have. So the wavelength, you can take any two along the wave, but they have to be in the same positions further out and they have to represent the full entire cycle. So the full entire process of the particles moving up and down as they're going through. Because sometimes you might say, oh, well, I might see that I'll have one of these, which might be somewhere over here as you're going through. So this is one position. And then you might say, oh, well, this one looks like it's similar. Why isn't this the wavelength? Well, the reason for that is because of the fact that it has gone through a crest but it has never come down through a trough and then came back to the position. So the key is, so this is actually one cycle, which is the full repetition. So we're interested in the wavelength being the full repetition, not half the repetition or not a partial repetition where you're taking maybe this and then maybe, you know, this one right here. And you might say, oh, well, this looks like it's a wavelength. They're in the same positions. No. Okay, because you would have to go through the entire cycle in order to find out okay, where the other one is. And now that is the wavelength of that one full repetition. Okay, so that is what the wavelength is. And we designate it okay, as a lambda. Now in SI units, so in metric standard units, this basically is always in meters. It doesn't have to be in meters like any other distance, right? Can be centimeters, can be miles, kilometers, millimeters, inches, whatever's convenient. But in SI units, it is the meter that is the wavelength. 
Now, the last component of the characteristic here is two kind of items. One is the phase, and another one is the phase shift. So it's a very subtle difference between these two, but let's talk about the phase first. So the phase, as you would have it, is if you take in, and let's take in a full cycle, a full repetition. So I'm going to take, let's say, from this starting point all the way to this ending point over here. So that would have been a full cycle within here. Now, within that cycle, you can take okay, any of the actual particles and then locate its position. So let's imagine that we're taking this. So this is at a certain position relative to the beginning. Now, this position can be designated with some position value, right? So this could be uh, the position value along the actual wave so that you know exactly where that particle is. So that is the phase. What is the position of that particular particle in an instant in time? So that's the phase. Very often this phase is represented as a percentage or a portion of the entire repetition. So if you have this as your entire repetition, instead of identifying the exact position on the X axis or in the actual position, okay, relative to some point, we do it as a percentage of the starting point. So since this is one full repetition, we would be talking about this, which is basically halfway through the entire full repetition. So the phase of this would have been at 50% or simply 0.5 of the entire wavelength that you have. So at that point, this would have been the wavelength divided by two. That is the phase of that particle. If you take another particle, of course, might be a little bit more challenging to do it. If we take this one, which would have been approximately, so as you can see here, all the way through here, so this would have been kind of one quarter, right? One quarter of the wavelength or simply lambda, okay, over four. So this would have been lambda, which is the wavelength over four, which is a quarter. That's the position of this relative to that one full repetition cycle. So that is the phase. Now, a phase shift typically will be related once you have multiple waves happening so that you can compare two waves together. If there's only one wave, okay, then having an actual shift must be relative to some reference point. So some relative reference. Now I'm going to start to kind of go back in here and talk about these momentarily, okay, within. So I'll touch base on this phase in just a second. Now that you've seen these in particle form, I also wanted you to see this. So I've plotted this out on Desmos. And instead of having particles scattered and your X axis, which is the distance. Now, please remember this zero, this is a relative zero. We make this whatever we like. But as you know, this wave is going to be repeating and it's going to be oscillating back up and down, up and down and so on. So in terms of watching an actual wave like this, which is repetitive, it's very nice to be able to ask students and say, all right, let's label all the characteristics. So let's go through them. So one of the first items, okay, that is on our list, okay, within here. So the waveform itself is just the shape of the form. So we have a shape of the form, okay, which is provided to us. Then we have an amplitude. Well, the amplitude is gonna be from the peak to the equilibrium. So notice that this is the amplitude A, and it, we can read off what the size of that amplitude is. So if this was in meters, okay, or in centimeters, it does not matter, right, what that is in terms of its height, or it might be some other quantity that we're measuring. Well, this is one. So we would have said this has an amplitude of one. This amplitude, we do not say that it's negative one. We still say that the amplitude is one. We know that amplitude is relative to an equilibrium. That equilibrium is in the middle of the wave. So the particles would have been shifting up and down. So they're going from here all the way down, all the way up. 
but it is frozen in time, right? So it's like you froze this thing in time, you took a snapshot and you're looking at this wave. All right, what's the amplitude? This particular peak is the crest. This particular kind of minimum right there would be your trough, okay, that you have in here. So that's what we have in here. If you wanted to measure the wavelength, so we would have to actually take a look at two points in time, doesn't matter which ones you take. This so happens that it passes through zero. So I would have said, okay, well, let me now go through an entire cycle, full repetition. So it's somewhere up to here. And now that would have been my wavelength. So from here all the way to here is one wavelength. I could do the same from taking a peak from here and then going to a peak through here. And that would have been my lambda as well, or my wavelength. Now I can measure it out. I know that it's six, okay? And you know, notice that it's between six and seven, and this is what, one, two, three, four, five, all right? So this is approximately 6.25 you know, or something like that. Now I'm just guessing, and if this was in meters, then maybe this is 6.25 meters approximately, right? We can actually measure it exactly if we have better tools. That would have been your wavelength within here. And now let's come back to this concept of phase. We can take this actual wave and we can start shifting it around. So notice that here is our reference point of zero. But what if we moved this a little bit over? And I wanna just show you how that would look like, okay, on a graph. So, I, so here it is, okay? So I've kind of shifted it back out here. And notice that I've taken this, now the blue one might be another completely different wave. So in comparison, so if this red wave and this blue wave, notice that they are out of phase. So they're not in the same phase. They're not starting okay, their actual cycles at the same points. Now, when we're talking about, about waves that are out of phase or they are shifted, we still most of the time will assume the amplitudes are the same. Notice that the amplitude for this one and for this one, they're identical, okay? So they still have all of those characteristics. It looks like if we would intertwine them on top of each other, so if I shifted, okay, the actual wavelength would be the same as well. So the wavelength's the same, the amplitudes are the same, but they're not in phase. They're not in exactly the same phase. So the positions have been shifted. And notice that it's out of phase by full one, well, at least for this particular shift. So this has been shifted out and it is out of phase by one. That's what we have. Now, if it's meters, then it's out of phase by one meter. If it's millimeters or micrometers, doesn't matter, but it is out of phase. And that's what happens with these phases that you can have wavelengths, but they're going to be out of phase. And this plays a big role in various terms, okay, in terms of engineering for electricity, for example, but it also plays roles in other ways in terms of sound and other applications. So we have to understand when someone says out of phase, when you have two waves, what that means. It means that now they've been shifted apart. Okay, if they're in phase, then they're right on top of each other. That's what you would have. If I would take this original wave, so if I would take this entire wave, I'm going to remove some of these features here just so that it's not as clustered okay, in here. I'm gonna remove that, but I'm gonna take the entire thing and I just wanna show you because here you have particles okay, that are creating this. So I'm gonna duplicate this and bring it back down. And as I bring this back down, I just wanna show you out of phase. So let's imagine that we have this wave which has been stuck in a period in time. But there are other particles, okay? So I'm gonna just take this right out in here. And for these ones, let me take the style and let me just change it, okay? I'll make it blue so you can really see. So this would be in phase, that they're right on top of each other. So these are in phase. But if you move this, okay, and this starts to shift either to the left or it starts to shift to the right, so although they have the same amplitudes, they have the same wavelengths, but they are now out of phase. So they've now been shifted 
and the phase has changed. So phase, remember, is just positioning that you have of the particles. And this is very nicely seen here when it's just a line representing the particles. But you can see this in the particles themselves as I have just done it for you. So those are transverse waves. And hopefully this gives you a good understanding of some of these characteristics that you're going to be studying and you should be aware of. Equilibriums, amplitudes, crests and troughs, and wavelength, really important, and understanding phase shifts. Now, if this is for transverse, how does this exactly work if you're going to be talking about longitudinal waves, much, much different and much harder to be able to understand? Because of the fact that when we have particles in transverse waves, they're moving up and down. So it's easy for us to look at this graph and say, oh, the particles are just moving up and down. So, you know, they're creating this nice wave as we're going along. But in longitudinal waves, they're not moving up and down. So how are we going to get this plot, which kind of looks like this oscillating up and down? So what, what happens there? Well, let's not forget that in longitudinal waves, so I have taken these particles in here. And what we should notice, now this is only one line. I'm going to make this bigger and bigger so that it really pops out at us. Notice that the particles in here, longitudinal means that the wave is moving still in this direction. You know, these particles get bumped into each other. They keep shifting the energy. Let's again imagine it's to the right. And this wave is still propagating in this way. But it's not making the particles go up and down. It's making the particles go side to side. So they are parallel to the actual motion, but there is no actual up and down. So if we were looking at this, you know, how would we actually plot it? What would we be thinking about? Well, so if you take a look at these particles, notice that they're clustered together, right? In here, in here, but in here they're spread apart quite a bit. So these are, so as you're moving along, these are the compressions between particles. And then the rarefactions, which is the decompression, kind of in the middle. And if you would take these particles, then we can definitely graph this. But instead of thinking about that it, they're moving up and down, they're actually moving side to side, again, around an equilibrium. So it's still moving and shifting up and down. Now, no longer up and down, but left to right. So they're still shifting. And we can measure these distances, okay, that they're shifting apart. We can also measure the distances where the compressions happen and the relaxations happen. So if you were doing this, I'm going to just duplicate this, for instance. I'm going to just put them side by side because these particles that you would have, let's imagine that there's a lot of them. So they're kind of clustered together. And now you can really see nicely that, ooh, they're compressing in and then they're relaxing. So within here, if you were trying to think about exactly the same things, for example, like a wavelength, what exactly is a wavelength now, right? So as these compress back, okay, and in, so as they're moving around in terms of their compressions and relaxations. So in this case, this goes through and you would have, so if you would start maybe from here and you would go all the way, Okay, to the other compressions okay, as you're going through. This is like the particles you know, moving up and down. So the particles sh keep sh shifting left and right. And this would have been your lambda, which is your wavelength that you have between compressions. Like we've had over here, for instance, you can think about the comparison is, so here is your crest okay, and here is another crest right, that you would have. Well, between this crest and this crest, we know what the wavelength, what the actual lambda or the distance between these are on the actual propagating wave. Well, the same thing happens here. You can think of this as your crest, for instance. And here is another crest right here. And this creates now an actual lambda, which is the distance in between. And this, you know, this kind of rarefaction that we have or the uncompression, Okay, that would be like your trough okay, at the bottom. That's what you would have in there. 
So we can definitely think of these, okay, in terms of not just moving up and down, but they can be moving side to side, creating compressions and relaxations, okay, or rarefactions as you're going through. Now, in terms of thinking about amplitudes, right, so this could be an amplitude A of possibly the particles moving left to right, so it's the distance away from some equilibrium, okay, and as it moves and shifts back and forth, or you can think about the densities. So we can graph and think about the densities, where the density is really high and then the density is really low. And then it just alternate between highs and lows in terms of densities that you have in there. But one of the easier ones, especially in the beginning, is indeed still thinking the same thing. As in transverse, these things are moving up and down, right? So this is your crest, okay? This is your trough and the particles move up and down, and we can see that in a wave. Well, in this case, we do the same thing, except in the horizontal. So this could be your crest where it's really far away, then it comes back in, and then it's behind from the equilibrium. So that could be your negative point, so positive, so crest and trough, crest and trough. And these particles are just vibrating like harmonic, right? So they're going back and forth like a slinky, okay? Compressing, relaxing, compressing, and relaxing. So that's what you would have. And the same thing would happen. You would still have your phases. You would still have your phase shifts as well. So in fact, I've kind of animated this for us. So I'm going to take this back in here. So here's an example where you had the phase shift happening. So I took it out of decimals over here, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just remove one of these. So let's concentrate back in here on the actual um, one of the waves that we have. And now I'm going to designate this. So for a transverse wave, so let's imagine this is a particle that we have in here. And then here we have another particle, okay, that we're going through. So if it's transverse, so I'm going to just play this, okay, within. And notice that, so the particle is moving up and down, right? And notice that it's kind of traversing through. So it's the corresponding on the wave, right? So it's very far away and notice the equilibrium. It's like it's at minus two and it's just moving up and down, up and down. Now, what's the difference if you now take a longitudinal because they're not moving up and down? Well, what you can do is, I'm gonna now throw in another one. So notice the green one is now moving from side to side. That would be longitudinal, but it is now the distance away from, okay, that you have some equilibrium point. So it's moving around two, but it's moving back and forth, back and forth in here. And that's really cool to be able to see these particles. And now you can think about, all right, transverse easy, up and down, okay, and I can see the wave moving up and down. Longitudinal, they don't go up and down. They go from side to side compressions and rarefactions that we have, but we can still envision this movement from left to right, which is around some kind of an equilibrium point. All right, so that is an animated motion for you so that you can actually see this happening and play out. Now, so far, I've talked about the wave itself to its actual propagation distance. So we're talking about the distance that it covers. Wavelength is the distance that it covers between let's say peak and peak, okay? Or, you know, trough and trough or two positions for your full cycle, you know? How much time, okay, has not played a role? We've just been talking about how much distance. But now we do want to bring in time characteristics. So not just the distance of these particles, but also time. Now, two components with respect to time that you should be aware of, which are frequency and period. Now, when we introduce time in physics, which is should be typically right in the beginning of the course, I'm gonna put up a link up above there to a nice video which captures time and it actually tells you where time comes from and it's from repetitive processes. So processes that repeat and that has brought in frequency and period into the play. So repetitive process like your heartbeat which just keeps ticking, boom, 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 boom. 
the earth spinning around the sun once, twice, so on. And it just keeps repeating or the earth rotating around its axes. Again, repetitive processes. Well, in waves, the particles are also moving back and down, back and down. So repeated processes. So we have the concept of frequency and period back into waves. Frequency just simply means the number of cycles that happen per some unit of time. Now, typically for us, unit of time is per second if we want SI units. And because it's number of cycles per second, okay, we refer to that as Hertz. So Hertz was a scientist, okay, and it's named after him, but one per second. So when we say one over second, that actually represents Hertz. Now, period is very closely related to wavelength. Wavelength was the distance between the points that an entire complete cycle has happened. Or you can think of it as a particle and the particle will start and it will go up, okay? It will come down and then it will come back to its same position. That entire distance that it covers, okay? So as it goes up and down, that entire distance is your lambda is your wavelength that happens. Now, it's not the displacement because displacement obviously would be zero because it comes back to the same point. But, okay, it is the distance that covers. Or if you're looking at the entire wavelength as a snapshot, it would be the particles that are just shifted around that create the wavelength so between two points in the same positions that represent a full repetition how, you know, how much distance was covered in between there, that is your lambda. Now, period is asking you, how long did this take? So not how much distance was covered, but how long, how much time it took. And that is the amount of time per one cycle or per one repetition. And you have here the formulas for it. So you have the frequency, which is the number of cycles, per how much time passes by, or period, which is the amount of time that has passed by, and then how many cycles have passed in. And notice, these two are just reciprocals of each other. So if you think of fractions. So they're just reciprocals. We just flip the numerators and denominators, and we can have that. And because of that, frequency, if you know the period, is nothing else but one over the period because it is just the reciprocal and period if you know the frequency is just one over the frequency so let's try to show this through this little nice diagram in here and try to see and calculate these so here's an example of a wave now it doesn't matter if this was a transverse or longitudinal it's irrelevant to us so we can see the amplitude is three on this wave Okay, so that's what we have. It looks like within here, we can certainly capture okay, um, the actual positions. Now, in this wave, the horizontal X is no longer a position. It's no longer a distance of any kind. Here, this is time. So what we're talking about now is the time. So it's like you took one particle and now as this particle keeps moving up and down, up and down, as I showed you in that animation, okay, as it moves up and down, well, time passes by. So, you know, at zero time, now, of course, you can't really go back negative, but I guess, you know, it's always relative. So within here, if we ignore this for the moment and we start this at time zero and we let this particle move, so that means, okay, that at time one, if this was in seconds, so this is one, two, three, four, etc. So at time one, it has gone through all the way up and then all the way came down. Of course, if it goes faster, this would be more compressed, more compressed, so that you would have more, it would just kind of start speeding up back and forth, back and forth, okay, as you're going through. So if I go back into this animation, okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just remove one of these, let's just concentrate, okay, on for instance, the transverse one. 
So let, let me now take this, right? So this is slowly moving back and forth, back and forth. Now this is going back in time, okay? So it just depends because the animation starts from zero and goes onwards. But I can say this, all right, well, this can go much faster, right? So I can speed this up, okay? And now this is just going super quick, okay? As you're going back and forth. So it's going boom, 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 okay? And it continues on. So within here, you are now interested in, okay, well, how fast is it moving by? You know, how many cycles have passed by? So if I take this, for instance, and now I start to take, all right, here is one cycle all the way up, all the way down, and it comes back in. And now I ask the question, how long did that take? That's different than wavelength because wavelength is how far did it travel, okay, entirely from start to finish, not displacement, but how far, so distance. Here now I'm asking, how long did this take? Okay, well, I can look at this and I can say, oh, it took two seconds. What that would mean is that the period of one cycle is two seconds. So this wave has a period of two seconds, okay? So that's what this would have. Now, if I was talking about frequency, now, frequency is how many of these have happened, okay, in one second. Now, so frequency is the difference between now saying, oh, how many cycles have repeated, right, in terms of the amount of time. So here I can, you know, I can kind of rotate these back in. I'm going to switch these in, okay, and so this is what we're going to have in here. So that's, you know, one, here's another one. So these are the cycles that are repeating. Let's you know do one more for instance. So how many cycles did we have in here? Well, we had one, two, three, four cycles. So if I wanna calculate the frequency, I have four cycles in here. And now the question is, well, how long did those cycles take? Well, I can read this off. So it looks like it took eight seconds in here. So four cycles divided by eight seconds. Well, so that's gonna be a half, or simply it's gonna be 0 0.5, and that would be 0 0.5 hertz. What that is telling me, that every second, half a cycle passes by. That is what I would have. So these frequencies and times, they incorporate now time characteristics for us into the actual waves. So not just the distances that these things are moving, but also how fast they're happening. And therefore, if now we combine both of them, you know, how far did they move? And how fast is this happening? Well, hold on a second. Distance, how far? Time, which is, you know, how fast it's happening. I can take those two and I can now say, what's the speed of the actual wave? And that speed is gonna be one of the key important features for waves as you keep learning waves later on. So here, this is just an introduction. And what I will say is that the speed of the wave, so how fast it's moving, is lambda, because remember, this is nothing else but the distance that it has traveled for one cycle. So that's distance divided by period, which is the amount of time it takes for one cycle to happen. So if this, let's say, was in meters, if this was in seconds, then of course that would have been the speed of the actual wave. And the faster it moves, right, then that means, so as it keeps moving faster, that is now the interaction between the wavelength and the actual period that you have. So. If you've ever run into the speed of light, this is what they are referring to. So when they say, you know, three approximately, three times 10 to the eight meters per second, which is really quick for light, okay? It is a combination between your actual lambda and your period. But now notice something really magical here that we can write this, and this is gonna be your universal kind of speed for waves that we can take lambda and instead of writing one over t, hold on a second, one over t is nothing else but frequency. So we can now change this and say that the speed of any wave is lambda 
times its frequency. So how many cycles pass by every second? And when you multiply those two, you're going to get the speed of the wave. I'm not going to say much more here. There'll be another video based on that coming up. All right. So those were all the characteristics that you have of waves. I hope that it gave you some kind of a comparison and also understanding between transverse and longitudinal waves and how they get mopped out into the various characteristics. Thanks for watching. See you in future videos. Bye, everybody.